Hello, hello. Welcome. It is Wednesday night, about that time for Nerds of the North. Uh, I am DJ Bodebo. I am DJ Padawan. And uh, we're going to discuss some uh, video games and some movie news. First off, that was uh, Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins off of the Top, Gu Top Gun uh, soundtrack. Yes. Um, uh, there, was, there was a secret re reason why we did play that song, but uh, we, we shouldn't go into that. It's a little television show called Archer. Yes. <laughs> Probably not appropriate for children, but you know, it, the song was definitely worth it though. Um, I'm going to start off with some uh, video game news here. Coming up with uh, video game releases. Um, January 15th, which is today, uh, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation HD. Um, was was, was that the uh, PSP version? Uh, originally, it was uh, I believe it was a PSP or a Vita game. Okay. Um, and now they've ported it over to the 360, the PS3, and the PC. They've totally revamped it. Uh, new physics, new graphics, new sound. So, but the main thing about it was uh, apparently like it's a really it's a really good story and like somewhat essential to the whole Assassin's Creed storyline mm -hmm. so I guess they just decided to release it for all systems which honestly I'm sure it's happened before but like it's good to see that that you like a game maybe I, don't, I would imagine it was pretty popular for the handheld systems but it's nice to see them ported over especially for like if it was a totally independent story from Assassin's Creed but still fit in I don't know, it's nice to see that. Um, as we mentioned last week, uh, January 21st is Dragon Ball Z, The Battle of Z, which is for the Vita, the PS3, and the 360. Yeah, and I've had some experience playing this one on, a, on the demos, and it's, uh, it's not, not as bad as I thought it could actually be. It's, I like the group of four people fighting together, because you get a lot of the combo and tag-in moves that happen a lot in the show. Yeah. At the same time, it's... And maybe it's just because it's the demo. I'm not able to do what I want to do. So, the demo's got me interested to see how it's going to turn out. But I still think this game's going to be a rental to start before I pick it up. That's what I was just going to say. I was like, it's, it's very rare that I want to rent a game before I buy it. This, I think, is one of those times. I've been let down by too many Dragon Ball Z games. Yes. And <laughs> this one's going to be a rental to start. Yeah. Um, another one that you're hyped about, uh, January 28th, is Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Oh yes, have you seen yes. the side-by-side -side footage? Yes, I just watched it before the show. Is that not insane? Yeah, it, it actually, it's a different game. Like, yeah, it, it is no game. longer the Tomb Raider game, it is a new Tomb Raider game. Yeah, made for next-gen consoles, you can tell that with the graphics. Um, it looks amazing, They're like, I might actually go and pick this up. I, I haven't played a Tomb Raider game in years. Um, I think it was... Well, I played the first one for the 360, and it, it was kind of mixed. Like, some people really loved it, some people didn't like it as much. Uh, I don't know, like, I was... I never, I was never really, like, a huge Tomb Raider nerd, so, like, I didn't really mind it. I liked it for what it was. Mm -hmm. um, on January... Oh, this is another one for January 21st. Um, there's some Dead Rising DLC coming out called Operation Broken Eagle. Uh, since I own the game, uh, I didn't buy the season pass for the DLC. I don't really like doing that with a lot of games unless I know I'm going to put in a lot of hours. Um, this one, though, I, I might check out the first DLC and see what it's all about. I would imagine it's just a continuation of the storyline. Maybe some fun, like, free-roaming stuff as well. Probably has more vehicles and weapons and such. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the 28th, uh, there's a new Call of Duty uh, expansion coming out. It's called Extinction. Um, I believe it's just a... Yeah, I'm not a Call of Duty player anymore, but I believe this one is not just a map pack. It's like a four-player co-op uh, mode. I don't know if this is their new, like, zombies mode or what it like whatever it is, but I haven't really looked into it, but it's coming out on the 28th. All you Call of Duty fans, get at it. Um, now into a little bit of uh, news. The first thing I've seen uh, this week, uh, SimCity, which me and DJ Padawan here both own. 
and had it since launch. Yeah, had it since launch. It's rough, rocky launch. Oh. Yes, that was not good. How uh, many times did my continent have to get restarted? Yes. Uh, I was not pleased with the game when it fo first launched. Uh, too much traffic, too much issues with the servers uh, within the first like month, and all the bugs in the game. I, I honestly didn't have too many issues with the bugs in the game until I got farther into my city and started realizing that stuff is not working properly at all, and I'm suffering like my profits are suffering because of the, just the bugs. So I've played it a couple times recently. They've pretty much addressed all the issues. It can run smoothly. Like you're, it's much easier to make money than lose money in the game now. Oh yeah, I've played it recently and it's uh, definitely a step up. Like but a couple of steps up. Oh yeah, for sure. And then uh, EA has come out and said, they said at the start there's gonna be no offline mode. Uh, and then I'm sure right when they said that, they knew they are going to have to start working on this. Uh, apparently, they be, the, it, it's taken six and a half months of working to make this offline mode happen. Uh, I think it's a good move on EA's part. Um, it's just too many people were complaining to EA about not being able to play one of like the most obviously one of their more popular games on the Origin like PC platform. Uh, you can't play it offline. You have to be signed into the internet to play this game. Which, obviously that works for MMOs, like, there's no other way to do it, but like, when you're, when it's, it feels like a single player game when you're in it, they tried to eliminate that by having your friend's cities, like, within range, like, you can pretty much see them across the map, but, I don't know, like, I, I prefer, I would prefer playing by myself in a game like this. I don't know. Yeah, it's, Unless you and your friend are working side by side and you yeah. know what you're doing, yeah. working working by yourself is the best way because you're going to need all those different city plots to set up industrial zones, retail zones, Yeah. unless you make everything look like the uh, Judge Dredd mega cities and just have massive towers everywhere. <laughs> now there's, there's no set release date for the offline mode. Uh, it is coming in the next update, which I believe is update 10. Um, they... I would imagine it will be within the next few months. I would hope so anyways, because by then, it's been what? It's been a year since the game came out, roughly, like I would imagine. Maybe even a little bit more. Yeah, it's maybe just coming up to a year, because I know it was during all the beginning times oh, yes. I of it I'll... being uh, an iffy, iffy start, when I ended up deciding to pull a 24-hour... <laughs> <laughs> gaming session time on that before going to the science center. I, I I've definitely put some serious hours in the Sim City, which is I I don't do that very often anymore. It takes a really addicting game to do it to me, but that was one of them for sure. Yeah, I just put the game on and I had a movie sitting off beside me and then I realized about the fourth time I ended up having the <laughs> Hobbit play through. It's like, oh, <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I should go to bed. Look at the window. <laughs> is that the sun? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another piece of news, um, Daisy, which originally was a mod for Arma 2, um, which is just a regular army uh, first-person shooter, uh, it is now a standalone game, which you can get on Steam on the PC, and this is, I don't know, I don't know how many guys that, that uh, makes, like, made this original uh, mod, but, um, it's a slow process. It is still in alpha. Uh, it's like an alpha beta. You can buy it. I believe it's thirty nine ninety nine on Steam. Uh, but last week they announced in the first three weeks they sold eight hundred thousand copies, and now on the fourth week they've hit one million players. So for a game that's still in alpha, and obviously still had a lot of support from the mod. There was so many people playing the mod online when I used to play it. Um, that I find that pretty astounding to sell a million copies. Like that company has definitely made some serious cash at forty dollars a pop, a million times a million. Plus, it's probably just a handful of guys making the game. Uh, hopefully, they can hire on more guys to get the full game out sometime like soon. Because I I don't even think they were planning to move out of alpha for almost a year from now so and like obviously they're gonna go into beta and then release the full game when it's finally finished 
Yeah. But basically, this is just a game with a massive, massive map, and it's basically a survival game. Like, there's not, there's not hordes of zombies coming for you, but you have to pick up supplies and weapons and clothes, and you constantly have to eat and drink and give yourself medicine when you're sick. Um, it is really fun to play with a group of players. I was playing with five of my friends online on the same server. It, I, I, I had a blast. It was really fun. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not the type of game I would want to play by myself because that's how I played the original mod and I just constantly got killed all over the place after finding supplies and such and it just it doesn't hit well when you get <laughs> when you die with a whole bunch of supplies that you needed. Yeah, it seems almost like the Ultima Online issue. Yeah. Where it was the case of, well, why bother going into the dungeon and taking all the uh, damage from the monsters and everything? We'll just camp outside the dungeon and hit the other adventuring parties as they come out in their weakened state. Yeah. Um, another big number announcement coming from Steam this time, the PC uh, platform where you buy all your games. Um, in the past three months, Steam's user base has increased by 15%. Uh, I believe it was a couple months ago they announced that they were at uh, maybe 50 million or 60 million users. And now they announced it is 75 million users. Uh, and that is a jump of 10 million since October. So, and like, I guess it being the Christmas season, it was the uh, Black Friday sale. Yeah, it w the sales that Steam has is unreal. Like, my pocket definitely gets lighter during those sales. Um, they, the, the deals on there, like, it, it's hard, like, I would imagine, like, if I, I know I've talked to my friends who are purely console gamers. I've showed them Steam, and to get a gaming PC now is slowly getting easier and easier, like cheaper and cheaper. Obviously the higher end PCs are still going up in price, up in price, but the lower end laptops that you can get, you can play a lot of the uh, low end kind of games on Steam. And like, that's what I was stuck doing with my old laptop. I was just playing the simple, like five year old games, like that were on Steam for really, really cheap. But like now I haven't ran into a game that I can't play on my PC. Like, I, I thought Elder Scrolls Online would give it a test. I honestly thought it on high, especially because, like, when we ran the game, it was already on high settings. Yeah, immediately, that beta test immediately kicked up into high, but, uh, not going to say too much about it. Yeah. <laughs> all that we will, all that I will say about, uh, that Elder Scrolls Online beta is April can't come soon enough for yes. PC. Yes, yes. And consoles, you got to wait till June, but... It's worth the wait. Head yeah. out to your local store, go and hit up Microplane New Market, and get your pre-orders in now. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to head towards the PC platform first, but I know all my friends are going to be buying this on the console, so I'm probably going to end up play, uh, paying for both. Yeah, nobody else has the console that I have, so <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing I'm going to get it on PC. Yeah. Uh, another piece, and Steam also announced their uh, sales sales figures by region for 2013 um, so the total sales uh, they made like a pie chart online 41% uh, of their sales for 2013 was in North America 40% was in Western Europe and then all the rest of the regions of the world uh, including Russia was 5% or less so it, that kind of shows you like I, I thought uh, I guess Western Europe does have a lot of like gaming studios and a lot of game support, but I I actually thought it would be more divided than this, um, especially uh, Russia and their love for sim games, no matter what it is, because there's tons of games on Steam where it's just like bus <laughs> bus simulator, train simulator, uh, construction simulator. I don't know what it is, but those. Ru those Russians love those simulators. Simulator, games. simulator. Yeah, <laughs> life simulator. Um, another uh, piece of good news here that we m talked about the bad news uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Battlefield Four patches are finally rolling out for all platforms. Today, the Xbox One, I believe, got a patch, and yesterday or the day before, the PS3 and the PS4 got their patches. Uh, I believe the PC patch is out as well. If not, it is soon incoming. 
Uh, that's good to hear. Hopefully that kind of fixes a lot of the issues. We'll have to see. Um, another a, a big rumor here, well, not really that big. Uh, Diablo 3 has been announced for the PS4, which I believe they announced at E3. I believe when they announced the console, they were like, we get Diablo 3. Like, I'm pretty I'm not, sure. Or the PS4. Sure. The PS4. Like, I don't know if I said PS3 there. I know. I Well, I already own it for the yeah. PlayStation 3. Yeah. So, so I it, guess... It's it coming up for PlayStation 4. Let's, I don't need three it, different consoles to I play know. one game. That's the thing. Like, I, it kind of makes sense, but it kind of doesn't. Uh, but apparently... And this comes from Canada. Like, this, this is making, like, news around, like, everywhere. But uh, apparently this is... These usually come true. When it comes from these sources, like, they just, they messed up. Someone in the retail section messed up. But apparently the Diablo 3 is coming to the Xbox One, uh, and this was via a flyer or the online flyer from Best Buy and Future Shop in Canada. So I've, I've seen this done many times where Best Buy and Future Shop can't keep their lips shut and they leak something that was not supposed to be leaked. So... Yeah, I saw this rumor on IGN this morning, and I just didn't. I didn't bother clicking on it because I know usually I own the collector's edition. Why do yeah. else do I need? I'm just saying. I don't know. Like I, I, I still have it for a PC. I think that's fine enough for me. I know what you're saying. Um, and a small little thing that I thought I'd mentioned: uh, Miyazaki's uh, Spirited Away has been remade entirely in Minecraft. So all the set, like the main set pieces and like all the backgrounds and stuff, I was actually looking at the photos and like for Minecraft, like this is really good. Like if you've ever seen Spirited Away and want to see somebody's uh, rendition of that set, it actually is really good. They have a side by side comparison. Uh, it looks amazing. Like I, I never thought, because I've seen people do like characters and like, certain sets on Minecraft before, but, like, nothing like this. Like, mm -hmm. it is bang on. Um, I think that's about it for the uh, for the gaming news today. Do you have anything gaming-related? You've hit... That's the end of your gaming stuff? Yeah. Hmm. Only other thing I can think of for gaming is that uh, the board game Risk Legacy is amazing. <laughs> okay, we can talk about that. Like, you've been... You've been chatting up my ear uh, about... Uh, Risk and it, honestly, like I, I haven't played Risk board games since like I was a kid. Yes. But, well, you remember the original versions of Risk? Yeah. The board was all, the one thing that never changed was the board. Yeah. In Risk Legacy, it's designed to be played fifteen times, and the winner signs the board each and every time they win. Now, every time you play the game, the board changes. Yes. You can put down capital cities, other cities. People can put uh, scars on your territories. I have, in one of my uh, games there, I had three of my sections covered in a biohazard, so I kept losing guys, and I had to constantly put more guys in there just to make sure I could still hold the spot. But uh, it's a great game. I'm really happy that a friend of mine picked it up for us to play, and uh, I am currently the board <laughs> the board leader. Yeah. So gonna... challenges have been made, and they are coming after me. Yeah, it's gonna be it'll be really funny. Like for someone other than the owner of the game, the one who originally purchased it, or even got it as a gift. Like even no, if he he purchased it. Okay, I was gonna say like if you got it as a gift, I would still be mad if I wasn't the one to like. He and has like, yet to yeah, sign the board. He is yet to be on the board, so I, I find that pretty funny. Like, it's... I would be mad. Like, I would be deeply mad about that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I believe you've already said that the next one is on you. Yes, so. I will, I'm will. i purchasing the next board once we finish this one. I am purchasing the next one, so that will continue on. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, we're looking at getting our games in more often now. We've already been playing for over a year, and we've <laughs> only gotten five games in. Yeah. It's, what can you do when schedules don't match, eh? Yeah, I know. Right, that's pretty much it that I have for uh, video game news, so um, I'll take a moment here, I can talk quickly about uh, Comic-Con Toronto. Oh, yes. Now, Comic-Con Toronto, it's going to be the March 7th, 8th, and 9th, which is uh, the first weekend in March, and for us here, I believe that's the start of our March break. Yes, it is. So... 
They have announced the ticket prices. Ticket sales go on sale this weekend for advanced orders. If you it, so for Friday you're looking at fifteen dollars. For Saturday you're looking at twenty five, and for Sunday you're looking at twenty. Or you buy the weekend pass for forty five dollars, and you're getting Friday for free. Yeah. They've only announced uh, the first run of celebrity guests to show up, and uh, there's five or six guests that they were announced. Uh, there's a gentleman from Breaking Bad. There's a gentleman from Walking Dead. Uh, the actor who played Napoleon Dynamite is going to be there. But the two people I'm interested in lining up for to get some signatures, uh, Billy Boyd, yeah, otherwise Pippin, from Lord of the Rings, is going to be there, and Morina Baccarin. She's been in, uh, she's got a, t on a TV show, uh, some type of police drama, I can't remember what the name of it is. She's been in Stargate, but primarily, this is Inara from Firefly and Serenity. The, the police drama wasn't, uh, Rizzoli and Isles, was it? No, I, okay. it started with an H. Okay, it, it kind of looked been like... Front. I'm not sure. kind of looked like her, actually. Well, that's all the news I have for Comic-Con Toronto. I will keep you guys posted about it as we get more news, and sure enough, if you attend Comic-Con Toronto, you will find the Nerds of the North there. Yes. We are going to be there. So stop by, say hello, and who knows, you might just end up on our video channel. Yes. So... It's about that time. Uh, time to start the nostalgic break? I would say so. Alright, we've yammered on long enough about video games for right now, so we're going to take a little bit of a nostalgic break here on 102.7 Shop FM. And to start us off today for our three song set, you went and you dug out <laughs> the soundtrack for one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it had to be done. This is... The f we're going to have some songs here. They're going to come from the Blues Brothers movie. So, performed by the Blues Brothers, here is Jailhouse Rock. Welcome back to 102.7 Shop FM. We are the Nerds of the North. DJ Padawan here. <laughs> DJ Bonobo. That was our nostalgic break for our midway point in our show. We started it off with two fantastic songs from the Blues Brothers movie. We had uh, Jailhouse Rock, which actually plays during the credits. Yeah. And then, Everybody Needs Somebody to Love. Awesome track, awesome intro. It's a fantastic song. <laughs> I, l I love it when it's performed by Dan Aykroyd. He does such a great job. And to finish it off, well, it wouldn't be the nostalgic break <laughs> if we didn't have something nostalgic on there. So, that song from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze film, that was Vanilla Ice's Ninja Rap. Okay, well, since we ended up with some movies, or music from movies for a nostalgic break, it's time to flow into movie news. One of the new uh, stories I have here to talk about today is uh, for Marvel's Ant-Man. They have apparently cast Ant-Man, finally. And they picked Michael Douglas to play Hank Pym. I... Michael Douglas said he read the script, it sounds funny, it sounds interesting, and he wants to play it. Okay. I wouldn't. See, Kate, I, I'm not really... I don't know the whole Ant-Man storyline or, like, what the character he is even about, but... Neither do I. I... I'm probably going to get yelled at for this, but I put him on par with Aquaman. Okay, yeah. So a you... character that just exists, and I <laughs> I don't pay much attention to him. But, okay, when they go to film this movie, is it going to be, like, more of a costume, or, like, more... It's a costume, and he gets he can change his size. That's his ability. Okay, so obviously that will probably be CG, kind oh, of. yeah. Okay, because... Yeah. If it's going to be a character that's mostly CG anyways, like... It might just be the voice that they were after. Maybe, but yeah. if it's actually him in a costume physically, I don't know. It remains to be seen, because <laughs> we haven't seen it. All I've seen is concept art. I haven't seen anything else. Now, moving on, the World of Warcraft movie. Still it's, waiting on Halo. Yeah, we need a Halo, please. The World of Warcraft movie is to have a very human story at its heart. 
and that's very strange considering from the script that's been put out there, humans are, are the least featured race in the film. See, I, I can understand starting off with humans if it's like purely from like the Alliance city within World of Warcraft. Like if you're starting off in the main city for the Alliance in the game, mm -hmm. like starting out with humans and telling their story first, and then going into the rest of the world and the rest of the races and all that. Like, if you're starting in the main city, I would hope that they're gonna, like, you're gonna see other races and stuff like that within the city. But. Well, here's hoping. But uh, it's, it's the World of Warcraft movie. I, I don't know, man. Like, see. Something fantastic needs to happen to get my interest to even yeah. spark. Well, man, to, for somebody to pitch this movie idea, I would. I would have to imagine they came up with a pretty good storyline. I would hope. I would hope so. And you need to have a decent story. In fact, you know what? You want to have a story for it to pull for him? Look into the lore. Yeah. Pull something straight out of the lore and adapt it. Yeah. That's the way you're going to get fans and seats. There's a lot of good stuff uh, that even like fans have made about certain characters. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember a couple weeks back, uh, we mentioned that uh, the Naked Gun film would be getting a reboot. Yeah. And it's just been released that it's m going to be more of a sequel than a remake. Good. Enough with this remakes. <laughs> yeah, we've already talked about this. No more remakes. No more remakes. Come up with original ideas, people, please. But uh, who are they going to get to match Leslie Nielsen? I don't know. I don't know. One of the scripts was talking about, uh, in the article that I read, the guy working on the script was talking about having something like 20 jokes per page. <laughs> 20 or 30 jokes per script page. That's, that's pretty which, crazy. That's exactly Naked Gun. Yeah. That's exactly what those movies were like, but how are you going to pull that off? I don't know. Yeah. Have you heard of the Jurassic World movie? Uh, rings a bell. This is going to be the fourth installment in the Jurassic Park franchise. Okay. And... They're calling it Jurassic World. However, they might have... I don't know whether this came about from them specifically asking the actor or not, but Sam Neill has been asked. Uh, he would be Dr. Alan Grant. He's been asked by newspaper reporters and from fans that he runs into whether or not he's going to be in Jurassic World. And his response is as follows. I'm sure it's going to be great, but they don't need me. So he's washed his hands. He's not participating in Jurassic World. And you know what? Good call. Because Jurassic Park 3 was a stretch to have his character brought back in. Yeah. For it, it was per Jurassic 1 was perfect. Lost World made sense because of where it went. Yeah. To have reoccurring characters... After like a full, almost a full cast is, or like recast, yeah. going into a sequel or any other movie, like, it's nice to have one character maybe in the next movie, but when you're recurring movie after movie, yeah. it starts to get a little crazy. Now, if they happen to drop him in somewhere quickly as a cameo or something, cool. Yeah, if they're but doing like a backstory on anything, like kind don't, of... Don't have him in as a main, a main plot point. Let's have a... Uh, Take the story in a new direction if you're so intent on putting it out. So, uh, Hunger Games Catching Fire has been doing pretty good in the theaters, eh? Well, I would imagine so. It doesn't really have too much competition. It anyways. just beat Iron Man 3 for the number to one domestic box office. That would mean total sale or... Domestic oh, box okay. office. Okay. So it's counting North America. That's pretty intense. Yeah. Iron Man 3 held the record with $409 million okay. domestic. Okay. And just this week, Hunger Games Catching Fire raked in one, uh, $409.4 yeah. So they just edged it out. <laughs> Still haven't seen it. Neither have I. Still haven't seen the first one. No. I believe the first one I is got some on catching up to do. The first one is on Netflix. I ah, forget Netflix. I'll put on my Blu-ray. I've scanned through the movie and I, I don't know, man. Like I guess it's one of those movies you really have to pay attention. <laughs> but while scanning through the movie, I was just like, I don't see it. I don't understand. I don't know. 
somebody's talking nonsense about our airwaves. Somebody is talking nonsense about our airwaves out there right now. <laughs> Anywho, more movie news. <laughs> I don't know how 20th Century Fox managed this. And see if I can say it the way it was said in the article. They, I don't know how much mana <laughs> they had to tap. I don't know whether it was one color or all five. But 20th Century Fox has spent that mana needed and has summoned the rights for a Magic the Gathering film. Uh, I, I read an article, I seen the article on IGN, or actually it was Kotaku, mm -hmm. and the company who got the rights apparently is making, they are able to make a series of movies. It's not just one movie. Okay. That's what they were saying. I don't know if that's full, like, but whoever obtained those rights has the right to, and I believe they have came out and said that they're doing a I'm series. I'm pretty much sure it's going to be a five-movie series, because yeah. after that, there's no, there's no more Colors of Mana. Yeah. Unless you want to go into Artifacts. Yeah. I think that makes more sense yeah. than one movie. For those of you out there who don't know, Magic the Gathering is a collectible card game that's been out since the early 90s. Yeah. And it exploded in popularity. Now that... Uh, well, now that there's digital versions available. There's digital versions of it. There's every single month, there's some pro tour tournament somewhere. Yeah. Along with all the um, hobby stores, the comic book stores that used to have tables set up for their Warhammer players to come in and play. Those tables now no longer exist because there's always people sitting there playing cards. Yeah. And it's always magic. <laughs> well, I, I, man, I remember growing up, uh, maybe it was when it was when Pokemon first came out, the Pokemon card game. Yes. Uh, I believe it was, what, grade, grade four, grade five, maybe, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. uh, we all started collecting Pokemon, and then... I like my Pokemon digital, thank you. Yeah, so do I now. Uh, <laughs> I, I had Pokemon cards, I have to admit it. Um, As did I. But when Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, I never got it. I never bought into Yu-Gi-Oh! And then finally when we got into like grade 6, grade 7, was when Magic became cool. Honestly, I didn't make the switch then either. I just, like, cards were just out of my league by that point. Like, I just didn't touch them until... Even, like, until you bought me my first Magic deck, so, like, and then, even then, like, I really did enjoy it, and then all you guys, just, or, no, I wouldn't say you, but, like, everybody pretty much decided to stop playing Magic. So, I don't I know. I stopped playing because it stopped being fun for me. Yeah. I still have a deck. I'll play every now and then, but I've got other stuff that I like to do. I believe that's a computer fan. Actually, I don't know. Lovely. Whatever that sound is coming from. Anyways, moving on here. Uh, moving into Blu-ray releases for this week. The uh, Carrie movie comes out on Blu-ray yesterday. Meh. <laughs> Came out as a two-disc combo pack. Uh, we also have Riddick. Came out as a two-disc combo. Yeah. And at the same time, we have... Um, Riddick, the complete collection, has been released. So, wait, how many movies are in the series now? Is it three, or is it... Uh, this would be the third, yes. Okay. Uh, fourth, if you count Dark Fury, which is an animated film. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it for movie news for this week. On to everyday general nerd news. Um, how many... You watch uh, Big Bang Theory very much? Uh, yeah, I would say I do. <laughs> yeah, this uh, coming season, there's going to be quite the little surprise out there for uh, Sheldon. And this, in my opinion, this needed to be done. This is a perfect, perfect situation for Sheldon. It is. Sheldon is going to cross paths, according to the article, with James Earl Jones and Carrie Fisher. <laughs> if it's at the same time... I have a feeling Sheldon's going to be pulling the deer in the headlights look. And I really hope that's like the highlight kind of thing, because if they're at a convention and he meets even others that maybe not have, don't have <laughs> as big as, of a name in the nerd world, but uh, him going to a convention would be really interesting. But if it's just those two characters somewhere out in the street or wherever it might be, but like that'll be really interesting. Mm-hmm. 
Oh. It seems that we've hit pretty much the end of our uh, news topics for this week. It was pr- kind of a slow week there. Yeah, it really was. Anything that uh, you're looking forward to picking up? Anything you've got your eyes on that you're waiting for? Um, not particularly, no. Um, I've got a, a, I know uh, I've got a pre-order in for Tomb Raider uh, Definitive Edition. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to run down to Mike Play and do that. Yeah, hopefully we can talk to Kevin in there. Hopefully. Um, other than that, man, like I've been just enjoying my new surround sound system. I was watching uh, Half Blood Prince before I came over here. <laughs> so, and it was while I was writing the show notes and stuff. So, well, I as I've told you, if you've got a surround sound system, there's one movie you've got to put on to test it out. Yeah. And we played a song from it today. <laughs> you've got to go and put on Top Gun. Yeah, that I I'm gonna have to find that. I might have to da- I actually. I really wish it was on Netflix. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll take a look for it. I know I have the DVD at my house, so okay. if I have it, I'll, if I find it, I'll bring it over for you. The one I really do love, uh, I showed this off to uh, my friend. We threw on Transformers, and the opening sound where it does like a circle of uh, the Transformers oh, yeah. like noise, like that's the really good intro to listen to on a surround sound. Yeah, that one's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, I keep my Michael Bay to a yeah to a dead minimum. It's. The whole movie throughout is all right with surround sound. Like it's just the fighting scenes was obviously mainly like the noisy parts. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, the Harry Potter movies because there's not really like a lot of action. Like I just love listening to like all the music and stuff like that within the movie. Mm-hmm. Well, well, there is one piece of nerd news I can't put out there. I don't know how many people out there who listen who uh, who play, but uh, for. Warhammer and Warhammer 40k, there's a new change coming out to the White Dwarf magazine. White Dwarf is now going, it, currently right now is once a month White Dwarf gets released. Well, they're making a change, and the change will start February the 1st, which is a Saturday. The White Dwarf will now become a weekly magazine, and a new Warhammer World which is going to be a massive 350-page magazine, will be coming out once a month. Hmm. So more White Dwarf, more battle reports, more, unfortunately, models that you want to go and pick up. (laughs) And if there's any 40K players out there, well, you probably already know, but last week we had, or last weekend, we had the release of the Tyranids Codex. And the Tyranids look pretty good. I don't think they got as much of a boost after reading the Codex as a lot of the other armies have done coming into the 6th edition, but overall, 6th edition is really impressing me. Yeah, I like, I was, I was I just like how it say, works. I remember you saying you were going to go and get it. I wasn't sure if you actually... Uh, I picked it up, and 6th edition is really, really working well. I'm just waiting for my uh, Space Wolf Codex now. And then my is that space the last one? Because I remember it was down... Well, there's, a, there's a lot of codexes still to come. Oh, okay. uh, there's, I believe, approximately 14, 15 armies. Holy. And uh, I think they're only halfway through the list right now. Okay. Because I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, you always let me know when they're coming out, or you always mention it, but like it well, seems like... I'm trying to get you into I, the game. I know. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Like that's You just, have the artistic talent. You will enjoy the game. It's just another money sucker for me. <laughs> Something else to take my money from me. Yes, that's the reason although why I, I do, Although I, I would really enjoy the painting. The painting is one of those things that then just... You start with one model. Yeah. And you paint one model. Yeah. And that's it. You, maybe you don't do anything for another year. But then you paint another yeah. model. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or you go completely crazy and you buy yourself an army and have it sitting there in plastic spurs go, I don't know where to spur. Yeah, that, that would be my issue for a while. I'd be like, all right, I got, I got the paint. I got the models. Yeah, now you, you, You've got the airbrush, okay? You can get <laughs> it cleaned up and have that job done. And take that would be awesome. Like, if I could do, whether it be I'm doing the base coat or, like, just little highlights with the airbrush, that would be awesome. It'll be fantastic. Well, that we're going to bring us right down here to the end on our 102.7 Shop FM. We'll calling it in for Nerds of the North for this week. Now we're going to leave you with a song. Uh, This is going to be carrying in our theme recently of uh, playing at least something from Disney every single week. (laughs) Somebody out there likes it. Yeah, well there's a lot of people out there who (laughs) like it. 
Because uh, I know for a fact, due to what Cartania just gave his sister earlier on in the week, they are going to freak out over anything Disney that's played. Yeah. But this this isn't an official Disney, but this is our favorite remix. Uh... Disney asked them to put this on to, really? to record this. This no. is on a Disney official album, my no, friend. No, no. Yes, Disney went and saw the talent of two YouTube stars, and they decided to put them together. That's pretty epic. See, so I here we go. That. We're going to call it an end today. Thank you for very much for listening. I am DJ Padawan. And I am DJ Bodavon. Please stay tuned to catch you again next week on 102.7 Shop FM for Nerds of the North. We're going to leave you with Peter Hollins and Alex G. singing the Disney Classics medley.